Hi, welcome back to MedBody. Today we are going to discuss how to differentiate the right and left bonds of upper limb. So these are the bonds of the upper limb and basically the bonds of upper limb is classified into the bonds of the shoulder girdle and the bonds of the free arm or the free upper limb. Okay, the bonds of the shoulder girdle includes the scapula and the clavicle and the bonds of the free limb is again classified into bonds of the arm, bonds of the forearm and the bonds of the hand. So uh, this is the bonds of the arm which is the humerus and these two are the ulna and radius which are the bonds of the forearm. So let's have a look on our clavicle first. So I told that clavicle is a bone of the shoulder girdle and uh, this is a clavicle. A typical clavicle has mainly two ends a sternal end and a acromial end. So sternal end will be round more round and the acromial end will be more flat you can see here it is more flat and this is the sternal end and every time the sternal end will be the medial and the acromial end will be the lateral what is medial and what is lateral if uh, a part is near to the body or near to the center of the body then we can tell it is medial if it is away from the center then we can tell us lateral so uh, this is medial this is lateral medial what is medial the sternal end and the acromial end is the lateral one and we can see a tubercle here okay we can see a tubercle here this one is known as the coracoid tubercle and this tubercle have to be posterior posterior means back and have to be superior superior means up inferior means down okay then it have to be this tubercle have to be superior as the same same time posterior so this have to be superior and posterior this have to be medial and this have to be lateral so this is the bone of the left part okay then this one is the right we can tell like this is turn, uh, this is the acromial end they have this have to be lateral and when we see about the tubercle uh, this is the tubercle this tubercle have to be superior at the same time posterior so like this this is the left clavicle this is the right clavicle so just uh, let's have a look on the scapula so this is our scapula and this is the short blade of the scapula and this is the spine of the scapula you can see here and uh, it has some process this is the coracoid process this one is the coracoid process and this one is the acromial process okay this one is the acromial pr process we can tell this as the supraspinatus and this one as the infraspinatus because superior to spine and the inferior to spine so these are the parts and this one is the glenoid cavity to this glenoid cavity our head of the humerus get attached so, like this uh, we have to differentiate whether this scapula is right or left for that first of all we have to point out the spine of the scapula this is the spine of the scapula okay this spine have to be posterior means back and this glenoid cavity have to be lateral lateral means away from the body or the center of the body so this have to be the right one and when we take the other one we can see the spine it have to be posterior and the glenoid cavity it has to be lateral so these are the scapula so this is the left scapula and this is the right scapula i repeat the spine have to be posterior and the glenoid cavity have to be lateral so let's have a look on the other bone next bone so i told about the bone which makes so the let's shoulder. have a look on the bone which makes the arm this is the humerus okay and this is the head of the humerus and this one is the body of the humerus and this fossa we can see here it is the olecran fossa and this one this part is known as the trochlea of humerus okay this one is the trochlea of humerus so i am just telling the important part of the bone and if we want to differentiate whether this is right and left uh, we have to see the head first and this head have to be medial all the time okay this head have to be medial and then we have to look on the olecran fossa and this olecran fossa it have to be posterior all the time posterior means back so like this so this is the bone which forms the right side and let's have a look on the other bone so this head have to be medial and the olecran fossa this is the olecran fossa it have to be posterior so it one it, this one is the left one okay so this is the left and right humerus so this is the bone which forms the arm and let's have a look on the bones which forms the forearm so these are the bone which forms the forearm this is ulna okay this is ulna 
and these are the radius so i just want to introduce two words proximal and distal proximal means near to our body the part near to our body distal means it is away from our body if i am placing uh, this ulna ulna like in my hand this part have to be the proximal means near to my body and this part have to be away distal from the body distal is away proximal is near and uh, i just want to tell one more thing this is the ulna and this is the radius and these are the two bones which forms the forearm and this ulna have to be near to my body this means medial and this one have to be lateral all the time okay radius have to be lateral all the time i'll just hold like this so the radial have radius have to be lateral all the time and the ulna have to be medial so this is the bones of our forearm and just remember the thumb the bone near to the thumb is the radius okay the bone near to thumb is radius just to understand and oh, so let's have a look on the ulna first this is our ulna so first i will tell which is the proximal and distal part this is the proximal part okay it's very easy to identify this is very small and this is like something flower or something notch and this notch is known as the trochlear notch okay and this one is known as the olecran this is known as the olecran process and this one is known as the trochlea so trochlea notch okay this one is the trochlea notch and this one is the olecran process so i just told before these words like trochlea and olecran when i take this humerus we can see the olecran fossa this is the fossa for the olecran of the ulna so it comes this olecran process comes to this olecran fossa like this okay you might have got and we know this is the trochlea of the humerus and this is the trochlear notch of ulna this is the trochlea of humerus and this is the trochlear notch of ulna and uh, it have to be fit like this okay sorry like this olecran in the olecran fossa and the trochlea in the trochlear notch i just want to tell you this okay and let's identify whether this ulna is right and left this trochlear notch have to be so anterior all the time okay this trochlear notch have to be anterior means friend all the time and we can see here a facet and this one is for the articulation of radius head like the radius will articulate here so this one have to be lateral this part have to be lateral all the time you can see here i think this part have to be lateral okay this is uh, this part have to be anterior and this part have to be lateral and uh, when we tell this styloid process styloid process have to be medial all the time so this one is the right ulna and let's take the other ulna now so notch have to be anterior then this is the radial uh, the fossa for the radial uh, attachment of the radial head so this have to be lateral and the styloid process it have to be medial so this one is the left ulna this is left ulna this is right ulna so let's have a look on the radius now this is our radius and this part okay you can see very well this part is the proximal part this part is the proximal part okay and this part is the distal part of radius okay this part is the distal part of the radius this is the body of the radius this is the head of the radius this this is the tuberosity and this one is the styloid process this process is the styloid process okay so let's differentiate right and left radius for the, this the tuberosity it have to be anterior all the time the tuberosity have to be anterior and the styloid process have to be lateral tuberosity have to be anterior and the styloid process have to be lateral so this is the right ulna sorry right radius and tuberosity anterior styloid process lateral so this is the left ulna, left radius so let's take the ulna and if i am telling the ulna like this okay you can see the styloid process uh, two styloid process on the medial and lateral aspect lateral is the radius one and the uh, styloid process of the ulna will form the medial aspect so these are the bonds i hope you got everything about uh, differentiating right and left i didn't tell the parts very uh, like i didn't explain all the part 
but i hope you understand uh, please watch my video till the end and please subscribe to my channel thank you